Hey, what's going on? If you are interested in bonding Rune to a node provider, then I'm gonna give you everything you need to know in this video in order to do that. Where to find the node operators, the dashboards so that you can track what is going on with your position, and also three different ways that you can bond to a node. The biggest bit of concern I've seen from people that wanna to bond to a node is the fear that the node operator can run off with the rune. But that cannot happen when you bond to a node. What you're doing, you're using a bond module in Thorchain. You're not actually sending the rune to the node operator themselves. So you actually maintain custody of the funds. You're just not able to unbond from the node operator unless the node operator is churned out from the set. So you're sort of locked unless the node operator leaves the set. So that's the bit that you kind of lose control on. So if you are a longer term holder of Rune, then this could be a strategy for you to earn some APY single sided on that. Firstly, where could you find a node operator? You can DM people in the community that you trust that know some node providers if you wanted to go that route. You can also go to the dev Thor, the Thorchain devs Discord, and they've got this channel over here, <clears throat> node providers, and you can see that there are some nodes that are advertising themselves. So you've got this one, SliceX, available spots, 15% flat fee. The fees range, it's mostly between 10 and 20%, but as you can see from this one, Aquila here, if you've got at least 5,000 rune minimum, then he's got a 5% fee, which is the lowest that I have seen. You've also got Yangu though, 10% flat fee. Auto stake has a 10% flat fee and a 1000 rune minimum bond. And these bond providers, I don't know about all of them. I, you know, I don't know what it takes to be able to post in here, but I've seen all, all these look like people that I've seen around at least for a long time that are probably completely safe. You might be wondering, all right, so if I do bond to a node, what do I need to be looking at to monitor my position? There are three main web pages that you can take a look at. The first one is thorchain.net slash nodes, and I'll have links to all this stuff wherever the video is posted. It's got a countdown for when the next churn is gonna be. So if you're wanting to see what's going on with your node, do they plan to churn out on this next churn, or do they plan to stay in there? What you can do is you're gonna be, you'll know your node's address when you work with them. So what you can do is come and search for their, their, their address over here on the left-hand side. So like this one, this is perfect. This node right here, right here, QESF is what it ends in. They are requesting to leave on the next churn for whatever reason. They could just be looking to take profits. They could maybe just want to be exiting. You really just don't know. But this is what it looks like when a node is requesting to leave. So if you look at your node, and they're requesting to leave, then you know on the next churn that you will be able to unbond from that node. Because remember, the node has to be churned out in order for you to unbond and get your rune back. It could also just be that the node that you're bonded to is the oldest in the set or potentially the, the worst performing or, or it ends up having the lowest bond, in which case in that churn, those get kicked out automatically. And then let's say that your node is churned out and you're fine with it though. You're like, I don't wanna unbond, but you know, they had to do some reorg, they're gonna churn back in. You could see here, if they are looking to churn back in all these with a, you know, an upward arrow, these are gonna be churning in on the next round if everything stands as it is. If you're wondering as well, how many other bond providers there are on a node, if you look at the operator here and you just see this number right there, which is 12 for this Z4LT, there's the main, the big bond at the top, but you can see that they have, you know, the last three don't really look like they have much. So it looks like this is made up of nine bond providers. If you wanna monitor your personal position, the best place probably to go is rune.tools to the bond tracker. You input the nodes address and your wallet address, and then it will pull up like this. And this is just a random one that I picked here. And as you can see, how much they have bonded, how much the next award will be, and how much the current APY is. The node, the, the churn did just happen, so the APY is generally higher at the beginning than it ends up being towards the end of the three-day cycle. But what'll happen then, if, if the node doesn't churn out or anything like that, this 1.7 will just get automatically added to the bond and then it starts over and the APY starts over and just every churn is like that. 
Let's say that your node did churn out this cycle and you wanted to unbond your rune from that node. Sometimes it takes a while to retire the old vaults, so you may not be able to immediately unbond your position. So just wanted to give you a heads up there. If your node turns out, you probably, you can't immediately unbond. You probably have to wait several hours is what, uh, what I've been told. So that's it in terms of where to find a node and how to monitor your node. Now let's talk about three ways for you to actually bond to a node. Before we get into this, because you are gonna need a node address, what you're gonna end up doing is when you find a node, they need to whitelist your wallet address. So you need to give that to them and then they'll share their node address and then you'll see both of those things in here. But you can't, uh, you can't bond to a node without them whitelisting you. So you do have to reach out to a node and coordinate that a bit. The first platform I wanna share with you is ThorSwap. On the left-hand side, you've got this tab called Thor Node. If you click on that, you would search for your node's address, which is over here on the left-hand side. I'm just gonna pick a random one and click on that. Then all you would do is connect your wallet, which I have already done. Click on this drop-down here, and then for bond, you just select the amount that you wanna bond. Let's say it's 1,000, 1,000 rune. I'm gonna click bond, get this pop-up in the control wallet. You're gonna have to pay a little bit of gas, but then you would just confirm this, and then you would be bonded, assuming the transaction works, you would be bonded to the node. And then you would just come straight over here to this bond tracker. You would put in the node's address, your wallet address, hit refresh, and then you would see a screen like this. And that's how you can verify, or at least one way that you can verify that the transaction did work and you are officially bonded. The second way you could do it would be to use Asgard X, which is a desktop app that lives locally on your computer. So I have a dummy wallet here selected. You would just click on the... Thorchain, you know, this rune token here in the assets tab. There's a button over here called deposit. So then you would hit deposit and then bond is already selected. So same deal here. You would just put in the node address, the amount of rune, let's say a thousand. And I don't have any in here is why it's giving me these red, the red words. And then you would, you would just hit bond. Simple as that. And the third way to do it is to use Voltisig. Similar thing here. You've got a list of all the assets in this wallet. I'm just clicking on rune here. At the top right, you've got this function button. I'm gonna hit that. Then bond, again, is already selected here. Put in the node address, put in the amount of rune you wanna do, hit continue, do your signing through Voltisig, and you're done there as well. With all of these platforms, you can also just select to unbond when the node is churned out, put in the same information, put the amount of rune, which hopefully has increased since you have been bonding uh, to a node provider and earning some APY. Hit continue, do your sign your transaction, and then it'll be returned back to your wallet. There you go. That's how you bond to a node on ThorChain. As always, hope you got some value out of this video and see you on the next one.